on Australia's business channel. This is Moneymaker. Hi, I'm David Kosh and welcome to the program where each week we plan on bringing you the very latest news, information and advice on how to grow your business, make it more efficient and hopefully more profitable for you. Thanks, David. Well, our next uh, guest argues that in the, uh, the current environment, it's virtually impossible for one person or team to solve complex business problems. The solution? Collaboration. With new technology, geographical separation no longer stands in the way of people collaborating. So why do they need to do it and how do you do it? Well, Mark Schenk is the co-author of a new white paper called Building a Collaborative Workplace and he joins me now in the studio. Mark, hello. First of all, could you explain what you actually mean by collaboration? Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll use an example. Uh, Fiona Woods, Dr. Fiona Woods, uh, Australian of the Year 2005. Uh, she invented spray on skin, came to um, public significance in 2002 for treating, treating the um, burns victims from the uh, Bali bombing. And, uh, and, and she talked about collaboration as being, uh, in these terms, she said, uh, I don't have the brain, I don't have the mental capacity, the time or the, uh, or the energy to manufacture all the pieces of the jigsaw, but I know where to find them. And so I go out there and I see great science being done and I say, wow, I know where that piece of the jigsaw fits and if we work together, and you give me that piece, I have a piece for you. And so you know, the, the whole idea about building, um, uh, building the piece of the jigsaw is, uh, is very valuable. And it talks not only to what collaboration is, but also how it's important. Um, in the paper, you talk about three types of collaboration. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, yeah, team collaboration uh, is fairly self-evident. That's where you have a team of people who are essentially given a task, some resources, and a time frame. And they're expected to achieve a certain outcome. And, and we're, we're all pretty much familiar with that. But uh, for SMEs, uh, the next type of, of collaboration called community collaboration is really important. Um, an example of that would be uh, a firm that uh, was uh, a consulting firm who had uh, offices across the country and their client was mainly defence. And one of the consultants in Perth was approached by their client who said, well, uh, we're not sure what risk management software we're supposed to be using, do you know? And so they were, all the, all the project managers inside the consulting firm were connected by a, by a simple piece of technology called a list server. He posted the message and within 10 minutes he was able to go back into the client's office and give him the answer. And the company realised that they actually knew more about the client's business than the client did. So that was a really powerful realisation. Gives you an idea of the, the type of community collaboration. And the last one is network collaboration, and, and I use my own company as an example of that, where we're a, you know, we're a, a relatively small company, and, um, but there's a whole bunch of people in the world who are interested in things like collaboration, um, knowledge sharing, uh, the use of business narrative, all things that we, uh, that we have expertise in. And so we use our blog, uh, uh, you know, the publicly hosted web blog, and every day we post our ideas and thoughts on the concepts of, uh, of collaboration, etc. And a whole bunch of people around the world read that and connect to it. And we've essentially, we, we have a Google page rank of five, and if you put Google into, into, sorry, if you put anecdote into Google, we're the first hit. And we're a tiny little company. And so that's the power of network collaboration, can really make a big difference. And do you think that in Australia we're good at collaboration or not good or how do we? Well, the, the jury's still out on that and certainly uh, there's, uh, there's some really great examples but some not so good examples. And uh, we're about to, uh, we're in the process of setting up a, a national survey on uh, collaborative practices. So we hope to be able to answer that question uh, inside the next six months or so. And what about the difference between, say, SMEs and the way they collaborate and large corporations? Are SMEs good at collaborating or do they collaborate differently? How does that work? Um, well, I guess I'll answer it this way. SMEs certainly have the edge when it comes to collaboration. There's much, you know, there's fewer levels of hierarchy, there's fewer rules, less internal red tape, and uh, they're, they're able to adapt to new circumstances and, and just and take on opportunities as they arise because they, they have that flexibility. Um, we, a large client that we're working with, uh, we're trying to encourage them to, uh, to, to, to blog internally. You know, so that, they, that this new way of communicating and, uh, and, and spreading ideas. And they're quite literally laughing at us, saying there is no way that anyone in this company would ever do that because you don't say anything that hasn't been approved. And so the culture of that large organisation uh, really does not lend itself to collaboration. And on the culture, so how do we improve our culture of collaboration? Well, uh, there's, a, there's a range of things that you can do. Um, 
uh, I guess the first thing would be uh, if you read the white paper, we've got like a simple uh, checklist in there to give you an idea to tick and flick uh, uh, in response to some questions, to give you an idea of what the collaboration culture in your organisation is, because it's really that understanding that helps you take the next steps. But it's simple things. Um, firstly, there's a firstly don't spend a huge amount on technology. We talk about it in terms of uh, you should spend first on beer and travel. The whole thing about relationships are much more important. And the technology, the technology, 80% of your requirement can be met very, very inexpensively. So you know, if you're looking at very expensive technology solutions, stop. Uh, and the second thing is uh, practices. You should build practices into your organisation. You know, every time a project finishes, get the people together and do what we call an after action review, where you, get, you just ask three questions. Um, what worked, what didn't, and what are we going to do differently next time? If you're about to start something big, then you get all of the interested stakeholders, all of the, all of the people who might have one of the pieces of the jigsaw together, and you, you help them design the, uh, the, the approach so that you get all of those people together at the start. And that's where the days of the lone genius toiling away to come up with the perfect project plan, they're, they're well over. And how important in an organisation is leadership in terms of collaboration? Uh, fun, yeah, it's like many other things, leadership has a huge impact on collaboration and we've seen some organisations where the leaders actually are blogging, where they've, they've got an online diary inside the organisation and they just go, hey, today we signed a new contract with XYZ and, and so communications are much more open and they're leading by example. And it's amazing that in that organisation, the trust, the, the level of perceived trust in the leaders has skyrocketed. That's, that's great. Thank you very much, Mark Shank. That's been very interesting. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, very interesting. Mark Shank there from Anecdote Consulting. Well, that is all we have time for in this edition of Money Makers. I'm Bridie Barry. And I'm Julia Bickerstaff. Thanks for your company.